Welcome back YouTube, I'm Ahmed again from In-Depth Tech Reviews and in today's video I'm going to talk about iOS 16 Beta 3. Actually this is new to the channel, I usually don't make videos about iOS updates but I was planning for this for so long and this is my first video in the iOS 16 journey. I will initially start with the developer betas because they get released faster and then I will avail more time for iOS updates in my future videos so please let me know in the comments if you are interested. But for now, let's take a look at the iOS 16 developer beta 3 and see what's new. Now let's talk about the update size and the build number. Here on the 13 Pro Max, it's 1.53 gigabytes. And when you go to the about page under settings, now when you tap on the iOS version, it will take you to a totally different page with the build number showing over here. So if we're gonna compare this to the stable version of iOS, as you see, to know the build number when you tap on the iOS version it will show it in the same line item but now we are getting a totally different page so hopefully in the future we will see more information in this page but for now all you get is the build number. And lastly the modem firmware is 2.07.00 up from 2.06.01 and now let's take a look at the new features. Let's start with the lock screen and the first change is in the clock font. Now when you tap on customize and then tap on the clock, you will see eight different fonts to choose from. And the two new fonts are located over here in the second column. You will notice that the first one is thinner than the other six and this one is bolder. The second change is the new color for the globe icon. Now it's using a black color instead of blue. The second change is in the battery widget. Now you can tell the charging status of your phone and the accessory. And in this example, I have my Apple Watch on the charger and I can tell from here if it's currently charging or not. The third change is in the calendar widget. Now if you have an upcoming event, it will only show the timings and it will hide the name of the event. But once you unlock the device, the event name will appear. Previously, the event name used to appear either way. And when it comes to the wallpapers, I started to see some new ones, starting with the emoji category. There are some new combinations over here that I didn't see in beta 2. There is a new pride wallpaper and that's pretty much it. And lastly, when it comes to the widgets, I found a new analog clock under the city category. The world clock now has a smaller font and bigger margin. And lastly, the next alarm widgets have a slightly different designs. And under weather, the widgets are organized differently. It will start with the moon events, then sun events, and instead of starting with the air quality like beta 2. When it comes to the stocks, also it got reorganized. The watch list will come first and then the symbol. And then you will see a different design for the smaller widget and a bolder font for the bigger one. Under reminders, the list widget now shows the radio buttons next to your reminders. Under home, the widgets are ordered differently as well. But the home summary widget is now called summary. And you will see here in the widget, it says summary and instead of home summary like beta 2. When it comes to the big security widget now it has a different description and a slightly different design also the smaller one is now called security accessory instead of only security and also a slightly different design the lights and the switches category now called lights only with a different description the big climate widget also got a different description instead of saying indoor climate now it says see a summary of the climate in your home the smaller one also called climate sensor in a sort of only climate like the previous version in addition to a slightly different description. Now let's talk about the biggest change in this update. Now when you go to settings and then photos you will see a new item called shared library. This one will allow you to set up your iCloud shared photo library that Apple announced in the keynote and this is the first time we'll get access to this feature. So let's go through the wizard to see how it works. Here it will give you a quick explanation about the feature and it will let you know that you can only create one shared photo library on the device. And when you tap on a start setup, the second page will ask you for the participants that you want to add to your shared photo library and you can add up to five other people. So I'm gonna try to add one of the accounts I have here, this one, and then tap on add and then tap on continue. Page number three will allow you to choose the photos and videos you want to share with others. You can choose between all photos and videos, choose by people or date, choose manually, or you can simply tap on move photos later to overcome this step and do it later in the photos app. So I'm gonna tap on choose by people or date and then hit continue. This page will explain to you that the phone will identify people in your photos to find the past moments together and automatically add these photos to your shared photo library. So I'm gonna hit continue and it says here identify test account or the uh, contact I chose from the phone. 
it will ask me which one of these uh, faces is related to the test account. So I'm going to choose a random face. And it says here, share photos starting from, because I already chose to share the photos starting from a specific date with specific people. So after choosing the person, I can also choose the starting date and then hit continue. It says here, preview the library before sharing. So I'm going to tap on preview. And these are the photos that are going to be shared. And if I'm happy with the photos, I can tap on continue over here. And it says here, invite via messages, and it will send the invitation uh, via iMessage right away from here. So here's the other device I sent the invitation to. And when I open the Photos app under the For You section, now I have the ability to accept this invitation. But this iPhone is not running iOS 16, so I don't see anything different over here. But if you take a look here on the 13 Pro Max running iOS 16, you will see a different button at the top right corner under the For You tab. Here I can view my personal library, I can view my shared library only, or I can view both together. To check the recent activities in the shared photo library under the For You tab, you will see a section here called Shared Album Activity. And from here, you can see the most recent additions from you and others. Uh, also, you can access the same thing under Albums. And here you will find Shared Album. And there is an album created called The Family. When you go inside it, you can see the photos as well. At the top right corner, you can see three buttons. One will allow you to add more people. You can allow subscribers to post photos. You can allow them to access the photos from iCloud.com using a link and also activate the notifications when someone adds photos. You can also select any of the photos added by you or others and delete all of them if you want, but others can only delete the photos they added to the shared photo library. And lastly, the ellipses button will show you all the options you would expect from any shared album with the ability to rename it if you want. But the feature seems to be broken for now because the phone didn't add any of the photos automatically. I had to add them manually myself. Also, the edits I applied on these photos after adding them to the shared photo library have not been shared with others, as explained by Apple in the keynote. Let me also show you what happens under settings after activating the feature. When I go to photos and then shared library, I get some options over here. The first one is to add participants. Here I can uh, activate the suggestions. And here the toggle says, when enabled, you will periodically receive suggestions for photos and videos that you may want to add to the shared photo library. And here you can improve the suggestions by adding more people to the list. The second option is called sharing from camera. This feature will give you a toggle inside the camera app, which will allow you to add photos to your shared photo library directly from the camera app. And there are some modifications too. You can choose to share the photos automatically. And in this case, the Bluetooth must be turned on. And this will allow the camera app to detect if you are with the participants. And if you are, the photos will be added automatically to the library. Or you can choose to share manually. Lastly, there is a new toggle here called share when at home. The description says when at home, always add photos and videos videos from camera to the shared photo library, even when other participants are not there. Let's go back to the previous page and here you can activate the deletion notifications and also delete the shared library. Now let's go to the camera to show you the new toggle. As you see, there is a new toggle at the top left corner. Tapping on it will activate the shared library, which means every photo you take in this mode will be automatically added and you can turn it off by tapping on it again. But I also noticed that the camera app will save your preference. So when I activate the toggle and then open the camera app again, it will stick to the shared library. Now let's talk about some random new features here and there. And the first one is under settings, general, software updates, and then automatic updates. Here you will see a new toggle called install security responses and system files. This feature will allow Apple to push security batches to the device without the need to wait for the upcoming software update, which means your device will remain secure even before the upcoming release, which is a very convenient feature. Change number two is under settings and then wallpaper. Now you will see a different preview for the home screen. It doesn't show the actual icons, but you will get these empty boxes instead. In addition to a new animation here at the bottom, that explains to you how you can change the wallpaper from the lock screen. Next, under settings and then privacy and security. When you scroll all the way down, you will see a new feature here called lockdown mode. 
The description says lockdown mode is an extreme optional protection that should only be used if you believe you may be personally targeted by a highly sophisticated cyber attack. If you want to know exactly what's gonna happen when you activate the lockdown mode, here in this list, when you tap on turn on lockdown mode, it will show you what happens in each app. So when it comes to FaceTime calls, you will not receive calls from people you didn't call before. Also, the messages will block some attachments and so on and so forth. And when you tap on turn on, it will require a device restart. So let me activate the feature to show you how it works. Now I activated the feature, so let's go back to settings one more time and see what's different now. When I go to privacy and security and then lockdown, now I can see a different page. It will explain what exactly will happen with each app. So for example, in the shared albums, the shared albums will be removed from the photos app and any shared album invitation will be uh, blocked if someone sent you via iMessage and so on and so forth. So it will show you exactly what's going on here. And if you want to turn off the feature, it will also require a restart. Next, under settings and then reminders, when you scroll all the way down, there is a new toggle here under badge count called include due today. And the description says include both overdue and the due today items in the badge count. Again, under settings and then wallet and the Apple Pay, when you scroll down, you will see a toggle here called use Apple Pay when needed. The description says your saved cards in Safari Autofill will be verified with the payment networks for compatibility with Apple Pay. And the last feature I'm gonna show you today is in the health app. When you go to browse and then tap on heart, scroll down, you will see a new option here called AFib history. This feature represents how often your heart has a common irregular rhythm. It can help you understand if your AFib is becoming more or less frequent and if life factors such as exercise or sleep have an impact on it. If you want to know more about this feature, there are a couple of articles here that you can tap on and it will explain to you what's going on. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new features I wanted to share with you in iOS 16 developer beta 3. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything. But for now, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.